Finally! <laughs> this week is gonna be a really exciting week, at least for me, because I'm really curious to open <laughs> all this up. We are finally gonna talk about electronics. Finally! I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. And together, we are on the mission of bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life. So, don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Monday for a new episode. It's been a long time we want to shoot this video, but we had a lot of other things to do and this being sitting here, you can tell by the <laughs> state of the box, this being sitting here for over a year on the boat. And the reason why we need to talk about this today is because we need a lot more Nimea 2000 wire and in order to know the amount of wire we need, we need to start installing each one of these equipments in each place. What do you have here? A lot of things. So let's get started. <laughs> Confession time again. We did a huge mistake. Which one? Our main mistake is that we have no time in between the time when we shoot the videos and the time you watch the videos. We, for example, last week's video, we finished the video two days before you watch it. So that means we are always in a hurry. And this week we are starting, a, I think we told you that already, but we are starting a lockdown, lockdown on the seat for two weeks that can extend. And we either stop the channel for a while, that's one option, that's we don't like that. We don't want to do that because we've been posting videos for over three years every single week. We don't want to fail on that. It's yeah. That's just something personal. We just don't want to stop. The other thing is we are in a hurry to order cables during quarantine. So when we come back, we have everything we need to install the electronics. So we decide to share with you the Some process. Thoughts. Yeah, the process, because usually people just have like three, four months in advance. So they do all the mistakes, they fix the mistakes and then show you the ready product. We cannot do that right now. We either don't show you anything or we show you our process, the way we think, the way we try to solve problems. And, and to be honest, to show the process. Yeah, to be honest, I think that's a good thing because the reality is it's not all rainbows and butterflies and perfect. <laughs> That's not reality. In reality, if you refit a boat, you're going to have doubts all the time. Yeah, and that's the reality, because like, if we show just everything perfect, you're going to think that's really simple to buy an old boat and refit, mm -hmm. and you're not going to have any trouble. You are going to have trouble, and I'm not saying that's Even bad. Even a new boat. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm not saying Even that's bad. Even if you bad. buy a new boat, you can have trouble. And that's not bad. That's just the way it is. You need to be ready to solve problems. And right now, this episode and a few of the last episodes we are just sharing with you the same thing that we did that week so it's basically we are running against time because yeah. the engine as you know it's not in place yet the support is ready one day before lockdown that's pretty just perfect you know <laughs> a month to have the support and when we have the supports now we cannot install the engine it's already galvanized so let's keep working on the wine because we are leaving today and maybe not coming back for two weeks where to start what do you have here yeah. We are going to explain each one of these, what's our plan, and then we are going to try to install each one in where it belongs, I mean where it will belong. So let's start with the screen. So this, I think, is going to be the main thing of the entire system because it's where we are going to control everything. So this is a short plotter. The reason why we chose BNG is because on our former boat we used to have BNG, much smaller system but we always love all the features BNG have for sailing. This is a sailing vessel, so we like the idea of having a electronic system that actually is meant to be used on a sailboat because there's so many good function abilities. Yeah, you got the point. We used to have a Vulcan 7 on our old boat and this is the Vulcan 12 that's a lot bigger. I don't even believe we needed this big, but it was on sale, it was, uh, we had a discount to have this with the radar. Ah, by the way, the radar is already in place. We installed the radar with, in the, mast. with the mast I think you saw that. Ago. If you didn't see that, you can check this other video. But more than that, yeah, that was a discount price because it was a pack. But other than that, the reason why we chose this size of chart plotter yeah. is because we are going to install underneath the dodger and we want to be able to properly see from the helm. Let's show you in place because it's much easier to understand the reason why. So the idea is to have the shark plotter here that when you are in a crossing, you won't be at the helm all the time. So most of the time you're gonna be sitting here and sitting here you can control easily touching the screen 
and is underneath the dodger that means it's not going to be wet all the time sometimes it might get wet it's fine but it's not going to be wet all the time so it's going to be much easier to control here but whenever you are at the helm we got this external controller and with this controller you can control everything from the helm so you can choose menu and choose everything you can even control the autopilot here it's not the easiest way to control the autopilot that's you can, why and that's why we came to the second controller that's also going to be at the helm so this controller is for the autopilot it's just the basic control for the autopilot and this is something that we said is, was going to be behind the helm but we changed our minds let's explain we can explain in the future right in the future yeah that's gonna be yeah basically just one difference is gonna be that the this controller instead of being behind of the helm is gonna be on the side of the helm so even Around sitting here. here it's gonna be like here right here so basically you can see everything there you can check the radar <laughs> the GPS everything and you can control the autopilot directly from the we controller. said we would explain the future and he's already explaining it planes are like that flexible we change planes all the time that's just who I am yeah so this is gonna be really awesome because it's much easier to navigate the autopilot here than touching the screen going into menus and everything so this is just quick quick just like shut off the autopilot turn on the autopilot put plus one plus ten minus one minus ten this is gonna be really good so this is gonna be right on the side of the panel accessible from the helm accessible from here accessible from everywhere and this screen, I think, is the perfect size for us to see from the helm properly. What do you think? Did I do a proper explanation? I Just think, think so. I'm not sure. Yeah, sorry if I make this episode a little bit confusing, but it's really hot today. We are shooting this in a really hurry because we need to finish today, because probably today is the last day we can stay at the boat before 15 days of quarantine at home because it's gonna we're gonna go on a lockdown in the city we are, so we're just being no hurry. <laughs> yeah, because we need to plan this because during this time period we can order the cables so we need to plan this really quick so we can order the cables and when we come back we have everything so we can install the electronics Makes so sense? let's go inside again so let's talk about what we're gonna see here on this screen so this screen basically we're gonna be able to see everything we have on the boat for electronics so we're gonna have this is basically a GPS so we're gonna have the map here you can see the map of the place you are using the ship with the map we also can see the radar that we already installed on the mess but we just need to install this part yeah we still have some parts of the radar that we still need to work on that one of them is this part the other one is the campus that we're gonna show you soon <laughs> so once we finish the installation of the radar we can see the radar and the GPS we can also see the autopilot we can see the wing instrument that's also on the mast already. We can see the depth instrument that's already on the hull of the boat. So all the instruments are gonna be seen and controlled by this big screen. Oh, this is the autopilot. Oh, the autopilot. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a really, really important thing on the boat, autopilot. Because if you are just two people, or sometimes if you are one people, you need to have an autopilot. <laughs> yeah, one person. <laughs> you got the point, of course. Yeah, so let's divide this because it's just too big. This is the CPU of the autopilot, that's the brain that controls the autopilot. So this is a NAC3 autopilot from BNG also. This is gonna control and take us to beautiful places. This is the campus. And this also will work for other things, for the radar, for everything else. Basically, what we are doing is creating a network of NIMEA 2000 that is this kind of wires. So everything talks to everything and they all work together. So basically, we are going to put the campus on the system, on the NIMEA 2000 network, on the backbone. That's how we call the network. So you're going to install this on the backbone and this is going to talk to the rest of all the equipments. And that's so cool. And that's the reason why we need to install, because we need to check how much more wire of NIMEA 2000 we need because this is really really expensive and we need maybe like I don't know Some 20 meters. Some people already asked if we are gonna have an extra autopilot we are gonna have a wind vane yeah. as an autopilot as well. In a, on a boat redundance is always good and instead of having two electronic ones that's really expensive the, the idea as Roberta said it, is to have the wind vane and the autopilot so the wind vane is something that we still need to give maintenance on but the installation is 100% ready all the blocks and everything is ready just 
screw two screws and we have an autopilot mechanical one but we have one by the way we don't you don't see the arm of the autopilot here and the reason for that is because we are gonna use the old one that we believe is still in order if it's not we are gonna buy a new arm but if it's still working we are gonna use the old one and that's the this is the yeah that's the old one from the boat so it's not from BNG this is from Auto Helm old Auto Helm so this is gonna be possible to install on this brain that's what we hope that's what they say this is the sensor that reads the position of the rudder for the autopilot and for everything else uh, what else what else, what else? <laughs> this is basically the backbone kit that's the kit to install the backbone that's basically this network of Nimea 2000 and with this kit we can put energy on the Nimea 2000 because many of the electronics for example the controllers they don't have energy wire the energy comes through the connections through the Nimea 2000 connection so we need a kit to make sure we can connect we can wire this to the batteries and this one I think is the last one so basically this is a AIS class A and B that means it will show other boats to us and show us to other boats and we are gonna have this installed on the Nimea 2000 backbone that means all the equipments are gonna read AIS signal from here and in order to do that we have this big AIS antenna that we still didn't build the support on the arch but we are gonna build so a support on the arch to install this on the arch we soon, hopefully <laughs> that's one more project we need to do and other than that we have this that oh it came, came with, with yeah it came with an extra GPS antenna so that's just an extra GPS antenna and also we don't have here the radio the VHF radio for now to leave the marina we are probably gonna use our old radio that cannot connect to all this stuff but we want to replace that for a radio that can talk to all the other equipments and why do we don't have it here? we don't have it here because of covid because <laughs> uh, they are out of stock BNG is out of stock in Brazil for the VHF radio and we want to have the VHF radio that we allowed us to have one radio on the charting table on the navigation table and one radio on the helm both the same you know just an extension for the radio we don't want to have two radios we want to have the extension for the radio and of course we're gonna have a handheld extra radio just for safety because you always it's always good to have two VHF radios and there's one more screen that I don't see here the shark plotter is on the cockpit that means in order to see the shark plotter we need to go to the cockpit so we decide to have a mode function display at least here so this is just a tiny remote function display that we are gonna probably install somewhere around here we might change a little bit the shape of the this wall and install somewhere here and this is where we can see most of the instruments we can see wind instrument we can see depth instrument we can see autopilot we can control autopilot we can see even the AIS we can see here that means that if we are on watch and we want to sit inside to be warm a little bit we still can check the wing we can still check a lot of things here that are really important or if we are at an anchor and we want to check how to monitor the wing we can monitor here so now let's start by I think opening this ceiling again it's been a long time we don't open the ceiling because we need to run the wires through the ceiling and we need to know yeah again the mess let the destruction begin of course Nimea 2000 cable, a system. We have the Ethernet cable for the radar, a system. And we have the energy cable for a shark motor. So now, I think to make it easier, we're gonna go to the cockpit. Inside? Yeah, and we're, gonna, we're gonna run from the cockpit to the inside and see if we manage to bring the wires to here. So now we have all the cables we need here and we can measure inside the amount of extra cables we need. For this case. <laughs> so now this is gonna come through a conduit that still we didn't install. 
I'm gonna go to this conduit down here. So this is gonna be here. That's the amount of wire we need. We are gonna have a backbone here. So basically this wire, this NIMEA 2000 cable needs to come to here. These are the connections for the NIMEA 2000 backbone. So we're gonna have a backbone behind of here somewhere. So we are gonna try to measure this length of cable, of wire, and we can buy a shorter one and use the shorter one here so we don't waste all this wire that we can use somewhere else. But this is the only way we can actually measure is by installing this one. So we know we need to here. So now we have the tape here and we can measure this size, this length. And now with this measurement we have a really good beginning of understanding of what we need. Because this is the, one of the tricky spots. So that means 2.3 meters. So now we need to check what length of cables, NIMEA 2000 cables they have. we always find wire that are not being used <laughs> all the time every every time we touch a wire we found find some extra wires this wire is from the hot hot water tank and uh, the heater yeah used to be here is not here anymore and the wires were still here so now we're just taking this out and leaving the rest of the connections so when we install back the hot water tank on the engine room we just run the wires to the switch and we're good to go so we're going to use this conduit that goes from there to here to pass a NIMEA 2000 wire. So we're going to connect the depth sensor to the rest of the network. That's just perfect. Good just, news. Just perfect. We have exactly the length we need from here to the navigation table. We have four and a half meters and that's the cable we have. So it's one less cable we need to buy. That was a win. That was a lot of work. One connection. First real connection for our NIMEA 2000 network. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's something. Making progress. One connection out of, I don't know, <laughs> many. But this is final. Depth sensor, speed sensor, we have you now. What's next? So now we managed to bring the wind sensor to here and the depth and speed sensor to here. The radar is here but we talked to a technician and he said that the wind sensor need to be the beginning of the backbone because the backbone is like this and the wind sensor actually instead of being a drop cable it's one of the side cables that he calls arm cable not the leg the arm so in the way we're gonna do is to have this connection that's a sim net because this is sim net this is NIMEA 2000 we need a converter that is this cable that we can connect here and then we can connect to the T. So what we're gonna do is to connect, not now, I'm just organizing and showing you, but we are gonna take this part apart and we're gonna do another... So we, we need more space inside of here as when we install this panel here, we're gonna create a bigger space inside of the cabinet in order to have all the electronics inside. So the wind vane is gonna connect to one of these ends the other one is gonna connect to this that is the radar box but we don't have this cable yet we need to buy this one so it's a short 30 centimeters cable that's gonna connect this to this and the last one is where we're gonna connect this adapter so then we start the NIMEA 2000 network the backbone so we connect to this one this way and from here we start the network the first thing dropping down the network is gonna be the depth sensor. And then we're gonna have a bunch of these little pieces, one after the other, behind this cabinet with all the drop ins. Right here. So we have the. Yeah, they need to understand your letter. Yeah, in Portuguese. You need to learn to read my letter in Portuguese. Mm, so your letter is already hard. Yeah, so the beginning is gonna be depth sensor, the first one. And then we're going to have the AIS, the VHF, AIS, mode function display, that's going to be here. And then we have everything that goes to the cockpit. The first one would be the short plotter, that needs to go all the way around 
through here and to the cockpit. We need to buy this cable, it's like four meters cable. And then we have the two controllers for the helm that are gonna drop in this way, down behind the battery, down the floor, up the engine room, to the roof, the ceiling of the engine room, and then to the helm. So on the helm, we're gonna have the autopilot controller, we're gonna have the chart plotter controller, and also the campus, because we have a metal campus, a metal yeah, board, <laughs> and on a metal board, we cannot install the campus inside of the board, won't work. The place we decide to risk and try is the helm, and if it doesn't work, we're gonna install somewhere else. But the only way to know if it works or not is to install, because once you install the electronics, the system is gonna read the campus and tell how much interference you have. If we have too much interference, we're gonna take out and install somewhere else. But for now, that's the place we want to risk. The former owner had this on the arch on the back, right? Yeah, but we had some solar panels and I don't think it's gonna be easy to install the arch yeah. on, the, on this term. So we're gonna give it a try on the helm. If it doesn't work, we'll go to the arch. We'll see, yeah. So the next step now is to decide for sure where the autopilot is going to be. At first we thought here was the best place, now we're not sure. We have a few options, we can install here, we can install where it used to be down there. We don't really like that option because there is the possibility of humidity because the transom is not insulated, so the if we have condensation, that's the first place we have condensation, so we don't like this idea, but Robera gave me a new idea. Maybe <laughs> we can pass the wires here, and we can have this installed here we can install all the way back there we can install on the ceiling we're gonna figure out that later but the but space is there the right? space is there yeah i think it's a good space because it's really uh well vented it's not like closed there is like always fresh air around and ventilated yeah it's like not inside the cabinet that you, there's no air flow there's a lot of air flow there is really good and better than that we maybe can bring the cable, the Nimea 2000 cable, from the helm straight to here instead of going back to the nav station and then to here. And this would make us use one less four and a half meter cable, Nimea cable, that's really expensive. So we are trying to find a way of doing that. So basically, we would bring one Nimea cable from here, from the backbone, down, down the floor, to the engine room. From here, we would have two three T's going up the helm, so it would be the autopilot, the controller for, controller for the chart plotter and the compass it would go up and then we would go straight this way, somehow down here, up here and to the autopilot. And from the autopilot, we CPU, we would go to the autopilot arm. We are trying to reduce the size, the length of the cables as they are really expensive. Yeah, but we have one problem, that this cable comes with the sensor. This is the sensor for the okay. rudder and this is 5.5 meters. So if we can manage to bring this cable all the way there, we can do that. If we can only bring to here, we will need to install it here. That's what we're gonna find out. We're gonna try to put this in place and see how far we can get with this five and a half meters cable. So let's do it. Now at least we can try to figure out if this support, because we have a support on the back, right here, that used to be from the old sensor, to screw like this. The place is really good, I think it's gonna be all good. So now we can pass the wire just to make sure we have enough wire. long enough that's really good but the bad news is that we need to do the modification on the support so for now we're gonna take this wire off so we when we install we run the wire again but at least we know that we can take all the way there and now we just need to figure out a way of bringing the Nimea 2000 cable from the autopilot to the helm with four and a half meters that's the goal <laughs> I think that sounds like a plan at least to me sounds like a plan <laughs> what do you think for now, it's the plan. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, of course, something can change along the way, but that's the starting point. So we can buy all the equipment, uh, all the cables, cables and everything. And hopefully by the time we are done with the lockdown, because right now we are on the boat hiding 
not working. We're just it's just our house. We're supposed to stay at home. We are at home. We're not working. We're just walking inside of our boat. But the city is still in lockdown. There is no one in the marine. No one's the marine. Yeah, we're just you know inside of the boat trying to figure out things so we can use these two weeks to order things and to think. And that's the reason why we're not working. We're just, you know, rambling and planning and planning <laughs> and rambling and sweating because it's so hot today. So that's a wrap. Yeah. That's we'll a wrap. See you guys next Monday. See you guys next Monday. With you, the sun is shining 24-7. Cause when we're together, it feels like we're in heaven. If it will get dark, you'll be my million stars. I know I can lean on you